2 Chronicles 19. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace in Jerusalem after war, which he wasn't supposed to be in. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, prophet, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldst thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? How's that? Plain and simple. Therefore the wrath upon thee from before the Lord. The Lord's not happy when, when his people are fellowshipping good with those that hate him. It's plain and simple. And the wrath. John the Baptist says, He that has not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God. It's equal. We ought not to have our love and care with those that don't love God. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem. And he went out again through the people from Beersheba, that's down south, to Mount Ephraim. That's not full north, but that's as north as his, as his territory is going in Judah. And brought them back to the Lord God of Israel, Lord God of their father. So he's bringing about a revival. He's bringing about the people back to God. And he's not going into Israel. He's staying in his territory. And he set judges. Now what we're going to look now is judging. We're going to look at law. We're going to look at the courts. We're going to look at a justice system that we see here in America. He set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. And municipal courts. There, was, there wasn't one main court, but there were courts throughout the city, so you didn't have to go far. And in the cities, most of the places where these were, took place was at the gate. And a lot of your city hall, a lot of your, your uh, business deals, your municipal deals and paperwork and important stuff was done at the gates. So not only is Jehoshaphat sent forth, let's get back to God. But let's be able to judge the people now. And he said to the judges, take heed what you do. Pay attention to what you're doing. For you judge not for man. You're not even judging for Jehoshaphat. You're not for the rich, you're not for the poor. You're not for minorities, you're not for majorities, but for the Lord. That's where America's gone wrong. That's where these nations go wrong. Their judges are set up and they're not for God. Who is with you in the judgment? So, Jehoshaphat is setting back up judges in the land. And if he says the Lord is with you, he's setting up men to be judges who God is with. He's not putting men who are ungodly. He's putting men that love the Lord and the Lord loves them. Wherefore, now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. How's that for, how's that for a qualification to go to law school? Before you enter the, the doorways of a law school to learn the law, they ask you, do you fear the Lord? That'd be a joke. That would be a minority issue. That would bring the, these lawyers into be and discrimination. But Jehoshaphat says, as far as my judges, he says, it's of God. God is with you and you better fear God. What's the fear? You better correctly judge. Be upon you, take heed, and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God. Look at a sinless God. Now, was Jesus Christ sinless? I've had Jehovah Witness tell me, yes. Does your organization believe he's sinless? Yes. Well, how's that for a verse where Jesus and God being one? 
nor respect a person's age, sex, color, creed, religion. Jehoshaphat says, if I'm guilty and I stand before you, you better judge me guilty. If a Levite stands before you, you better find him guilty if he's guilty. If a Gentile shows up and he's guilty, you find him guilty. If he's innocent, you find him innocent. Nor taking of gifts, no bribes. The Bible is against bribery. And that's throughout, that's politics today. Moreover, in Jerusalem, the city, the capital, did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites and of the priests. Remember, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And of the chief of the fathers of Israel, that would be all the twelve tribes, for the judgment of the Lord. So the Levites are judges. The priests are judges. The family that God has chosen to be the ambassador of the twelve tribes of Israel. And the fathers of Israel, those men of age, those men that have got character, those men who have lived a life, made mistakes and learned by them are still living. You're the judges. Rehoboam did, did error when he called the young men with him for counsel. For the judgment of the Lord. See, now see, it belongs to God. When people come to Jerusalem, it is the city of the Jewish God, Jehovah. And they have been done wrong. And if they get mistreated or ill treatment from a judge in Jerusalem or the city that they're in, which is the land of Israel given to the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by a possession by inheritance, if they have been done wrong by the judges who are ambassadors of God, that's going to make God look terrible. There is no God in our justice system today when evil prevails and innocent gets rejected. For the judgment of the Lord. And rest assured that even today in the church age, what judgment you pass, you will be judged by God, whether right or wrong. And for controversies, that's the only time that word shows up. People are going to come to you. He stole my sheep. His tree fell down on my house. He shortchanged me wheat. Well, I gave him a day's wages and he didn't give me a day's work my child is, is abusive uh, whatever the causes are the controversy you're going to have a man that is innocent you're going to have a man that's guilty when they return to Jerusalem and he charged them this is an order saying thus shall you do in the fear of the Lord number one priority for the judge of Jehoshaphat you got to fear God What's the fear? If I don't do right, God's going to do something to me. And you know, this is not church age, you know in the Old Testament God would do something. The power of God in the Old Testament was there could be fire coming down and destroying you. That happened to Nahab and Abihu. I mean, Nahab and uh, his brother. You're open up and swallow. Serpents came, fiery serpents came. You dropped dead on the site. That's not today. That's under the law. So you better fear God because if you don't do right, you don't know what God's going to do to you. Faithfully. Faithfully. You got to do right all the time and do right all the time and do right all the time and do right all the time. And you be at the job, and you be at the job, and you be at the job, and you be at the job. You say you keep repeating yourself. That's what you're supposed to be. And you close your eyes to skin color. You close your eyes to religion. You close your eyes to, to sex. And you judge faithfully. 
and with a perfect heart. Put that at the admittance of law schools in this world today, and you'll be laughed out. Boy, wouldn't you would love to go to a judge at this time in Second Chronicles 19? You've got a case against you, and you are in the right. Wouldn't you feel a peace of God to go before that that judge, and, and God is on your side because God knows you've done right, and you know you've done right, and you search the matter yourself, and you just completely feel confident in the Lord that you've done right, and you go up to those judges, and you find the judgment be proper. But then again, let's live real life. I guarantee all the judges did not follow this example. For all have sinned. There is none righteous. Not, not all these judges follow the example of Jehoshaphat. Come on, let's get real. And what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren Jews that dwell in their city, whatever case, it be a little case or it be a major case, whether it be a ring or it be gold and silver, between blood and blood, death, murder, My, my cow was, was slaughtered in your field. Your dog came and uh, attacked and killed my sheep. Between law and commandment, so law and commandment is not the same. Law says you have to have a battlement upon your roof. Commandment says thou shalt not. And statutes and judgments. For man to be found guilty of capital punishment, you're to apply capital punishment. Ye shall even warn, that's the first time that word shows up, warn. That's an interesting word. We're to go warn the people out in the world about the coming judgment, about the coming tribulation period, about the coming Jesus Christ, about What's going to happen after they're dying? That's the first place it shows up. And it's Jehoshaphat talking to his judges who are supposed to be right with God, fearing God. Aren't we not supposed to judge? Are we not supposed to look at a man and say, are you saved? Are you lost? Look at the things that that person is doing and be able to judge. And yet they come up to us and we're not supposed to be judging. What's the first thing they say to us? Judge not least he be judged. I guess I'm a judge, Revelation 1. And when they come up to you and you've got a public ministry and you are preaching the gospel, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You are warning them. They just don't want to listen. Now, we've got laws in this country. we got the fifth. You have the right not to say nothing. Why would you need to worry about that if you weren't guilty? If, if I was put in handcuffs, taken down to the police station, and I have been charged with a crime that I did not commit at all. I would be no problem answering all your questions. It would be guiltiness for me to, you know, I don't want to say nothing. I need a lawyer present. Warn them. Tell them. And then the guilty party will speak up against the warning. Because they feel guilty, they feel harassed, they feel not the fear of God. They've been convicted in it for the wrong way. Warn them that warn them that yeah, warn them that they trespass not against the Lord. How do we warn them of not trespassing against the Lord? You don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have the, the Son, you will not have life and you will face the wrath of God. That's a warning. Even trespass today in the church. I mean, we follow the law, but not for salvation. We ought to be respectable and good-mannered before the people. We ought not to do things that the world does. We're not to look like and imitate the world for the bad. When you do, when you go into that realm, what the world does, you're trespassing. Against the Lord. And so wrath come upon you. Well, Jehoshaphat, the wrath just came upon you. Verse 2. 
you trespass against the Lord by joining with the enemy. My people shall be as your people. You trespass. So Jehoshaphat is talking knowing what trespassing is. Come upon you upon your brethren, Jewish people, this do and ye shall not trespass. How are you going to trespass if you don't know what trespass is? It's up to the Levites, it's up to the priests, it's up to the judges to teach you. And that's what they would do. They send the priests, the Levites, the judges. They would go into the cities and judge, and they will teach the people what the law says and what not to do and what to do. And behold, Amariah, the chief priest, that would be the high priest, is over you. He's, he's the one in charge. In all manners of the Lord. So when it comes to the Lord, don't come to me as a king. I don't know any better. I just sinned against the Lord. God doesn't talk to me directly when it comes to the law. When it comes to the, to the uh, I mean, the law as far the law as far as the writings of Moses, as far as the tabernacle, as far as the burnt offering, as far as everything that pertains to God. That's not the king's job. That would be the priest's job. And if I, as a king, would interfere in the priest's office, I am violating the script. I have trespassed. The king trespassed into the priest's office was wrong. Saul did that. Ace, no, uh, give me a name. Another, another king did it, got leprosy. That would be no trespassing. So, with another trespass, Jehoshaphat saying, I don't belong in the priest's office. Now, you want to know about the nation? You want to know about the rulership of the nation? You come to me. You want to know about God? You go to the priest. And Zephadiah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, authority, and all the kings matter. So, but Zephadiah, would, you wouldn't just march up to the king and say, King, I got business. The military calls a chain of command. You have to follow that chain of command. Also the Levites shall be officers before you. They're in charge. Deal courageously. That's the only time that word shows up. And the Lord shall be with the good. How's that? God's not going to be with you if you're wicked and evil. It's not God hates the sin and loves the sinner. If you do good, you do right. What the judges have set before you, with the priests doing what they're supposed to, and you do right and you do not trespass, God will be with you. From a man who was out of the will of God for a while. Jehoshaphat knows what he's talking about. He's been there. 